Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It's Mr. Soul from Brothers Grimm Seeds. Today I'd like to do a little pot plant sex ed for everybody out there uh, because you know our favorite plant, the cannabis plant, it comes in both male and female. Uh, when you're growing the plants, you need to be able to recognize the one from the other. And um, it bears mentioning uh, right at the start that we uh, cannabis growers are trying to grow the female of the two. The, not the male, but the female. That's the one that gives the buds that we smoke. The male basically is useless as far as uh, cannabis to smoke. It's only useful as pollen donor to the female to make seeds to make more pot plants. Okay, so let's start with what do female flowers look like? And so I drew a little cartoonish sketch here. And so if you're looking really closely at the flower itself, it has two parts. There's the calyx and the pistils. They stick out a, like a peace sign coming out of the calyx, the pistils do. And here is where that thing is found on the plant is at the very uh, crotch be between the stem and the uh, branch of the plant. That's where the flower would be. Now you don't want to confuse it with, there's a little spur that comes out at that crotch point too. And uh, to the untrained eye, they might think, oh, that might be a flower. It's not, it's a part of the plant, it's called a spur. And sometimes you'll get additional branches that will start to grow out of the crotch point where you would only expect two branches, but sometimes you get a couple extras. And people will sometimes not know what that is, think it's a flower, think it's a male flower, and so on. So it's a little confusing, that's why I drew the pictures. Now a male flower looks more like this. At the very early stage, is a, it's just this little bulb or a little um, football shape, roughly, uh, coming out on it. And this is very important because the calyx does not have a stem at all. If you see a flower starting to form on a little stem that's coming out, well then very likely it's a male because uh, the male flowers come out on a stem and then there will be multiples all sort of emanating out of the same place. Whereas female flowers form individually one at a time next to each other in a different way than the the male flower does here. But here's the good news. When you do see male flowers, if you do see male flowers and you're worried because, why worry? Well, here's the thing to worry about. You don't want the pollen getting on your female plants and making seeds on a crop that you intended to be seedless, right? Okay, so the worry is that if left alone for long enough, these male flowers will open up and they will start to release pollen that will make seeds on your female plants, which you don't want. But the good news, as I said, is that in the early stages, you see this little football. A little later, maybe a week later, you might see multiple feet footballs all starting to form and cluster next to one another. Uh, but you still have two to three weeks before any pollen would be released from those flowers. Right in this state right here, they're closed up. They're not open. They need to open. And the stamen, that's the little dangling bits that hang out of the flower and then release the pollen. They have to hang there and dry out and pollen has to start coming out of them. There's enough time that some people rush to judgment and think, oh, cut the plant down. I think it's a male. Well, don't rush to judgment because it's silly. You could watch it for at least two weeks into flowering before it would be, have any chance of possibly releasing any pollen. And so by that time, when you've made sure that you're sure by these signs, the fact that it's on a stem and there are multiple uh, flowers coming out of it, that's a male. And then you can discard it. You know, you don't want it in your garden. The thing to do when you find a male is to cut it down and keep it away from the females. Uh, but like I said, you have the time to look at it carefully and examine it for long enough to be sure that it's a male. Don't just think it's a male and be not sure and still cut your plant down. That would be silly. Now, what about hermaphrodites? People talk about hermaphrodites all the time. Well, that's because a hermaphrodite is even more dangerous than a male plant. Reason is, a male plant is kind of easy to identify. Like I told you just now, uh, if you're seeing these flowers developing, and by the way, they're not gonna develop during the vegetative state of the plant. When it's in the 18 hour light cycle, this is highly unlikely that you're gonna see flowers 
Maybe you'll see little pre-flowers, but there's still not anything that you should make any rash judgment about until you enter into the 12 hour light cycle, 12 hours dark, 12 hours light, the plant is induced to start flowering. At that point, you really pay attention to the flowers. And if two weeks of flowering have gone by, in other words, you switch the lights to 12-12, and then two weeks later, you're looking at the plants, you're gonna see male or female flowers on your plants and you can decide which one is which and get rid of them if they're just male. Now, a hermaphrodite is um, insidious. That's so like a, a Trojan horse because it's in your garden and it looks like a female, but then at a certain moment, for whatever reasons, generally it's because of stress from light cycles uh, changing too many times uh, or it's erratic. Um, when you think about it, the thing that induces flowering in the cannabis plant is the fact that the light cycle changes to short days, long nights. And so if you want to affect the sexual expression of the plant, the best way to perturb that is going to be by changing the light cycles from long to short, long to short. And sometimes a plant will respond to that stress by having a hormonal reaction that creates male flowers on a normally female plant. Well, any plant that is female looking, but then starts growing male flowers, that's what we call a hermaphrodite. And the reason that they're dangerous is because you're thinking it's female, it's growing alongside all of your other plants, and then one day you start to see, huh, oh, there's male flowers coming out of that one. And if left untouched, two, three weeks later, pollen is going to be coming out of those male flowers and then you're going to get seeds on your plants, which you didn't want. So the thing to do in any case is when you're really sure you either have a hermaphrodite or a male in the room, you're going to cut it down and get it out of there. Uh, this is a numbers game. When you grow seeds to grow cannabis, uh, you grow a lot of them and then you pick the very best of the best and uh, cull the rest. So uh, that's how it works. Now, um, what else about hermaphrodites? What the heck is it? What, how does it happen? How do we know um, that it's a hermaphrodite? Well, by definition, a hermaphrodite is a plant that appears to be female and has female flowers, but then also grows male flowers on the same plant, generally due to stress. Uh, it can also be something that's genetic. It could just be in the family, like many Thai uh, plants, uh, Cannabis that comes from Thailand is often hermaphroditic just by nature, that all their plants uh, grow with both male and female flowers, and that's how they reproduce. Um, but most of the strains that we see today in modern indoor growing are not uh, that type, and uh, uh, certainly it's not intended uh, that they would be that type. So what we see is a plant that responds to stress by internal to the organism what's happening is that that stress has triggered a hormonal reaction because a hermaphrodite is caused by uh, hormonal uh, induction um, there's a chromosome uh, we all hear about all the time what makes a male a male what makes a female a female well a female is two x chromosomes and a male is an x and a y chromosome now a hermaphrodite will look like a female because it's a female in the sense that it has two X chromosomes. However, its hormones are a little messed up and it's doing a transition from female to male and you start growing male flowers on what was, uh, by all rights, so it looked like a female. And so that's what we call hermaphrodite. Now, how do we make feminized seeds? It's kind of related to that. And what we do is we purposely stress the plants and look for ones that will um, be hermaphrodites and start making male flowers due to stress. And we eliminate them. We get them out. We kill all of those. And then we're left with females that will not make male flowers under any conditions, any stressful condition. Then we know that this plant isn't a hermaphrodite, doesn't have the gene to carry the hermaphroditic uh, property or trait into the next generation. In other words, into its progeny if we were to cross it with another plant. So when we've identified females that are of a high quality breeding level, like really uh, something that you want to make uh, a future generation with, and you 
cross two females together, you're going to get all female seeds because there's no Y chromosome to make a male at all in there. They're both, they both have X chromosomes. But of course, at this point in the uh, conversation, you're wondering, well, how am I going to get pollen from two plants that you just told me you've tested them and under no stressful conditions will they, either of them make any pollen? Well, here's the good news there. It's the hormones that cause the male flowers to form and it's the stress that triggers the plant which has that tendency to have its hormonal balance upset by the stress and start growing male flowers on what was a female plant. Now, the plants that don't do that can still be induced to make male flowers by using hormones or blocking hormones or accelerate. The point is the plants that are used to make feminized seeds need to be vetted to be sure that they don't have a hermaphroditic tendency or trait or a gene that could be passed on to their offspring, which is what was wrong with so much of what was considered to be feminized seed in the early 2000s, uh, first 10 years or so, there was a lot of confusion and a lot of bad rap about feminized seed being hermaphroditic because the progenitors, the ones who were the first uh, feminized seed creators, they were confused as to what they were doing in the sense that they used hermaphrodite pollen to pollinate another plant. And when you think about it, it is XX chromosomes, and so you shouldn't expect a male. However, what they were doing was they're now breeding in more hermaphrodites. And so, the, of course, feminized seeds in the early 2000s had lots of hermaphrodites because that was the breeding stock they were using. They didn't understand that there's a very technical, scientific, scientifically technical point that needs to be understood, and that is that a plant that wouldn't Hermit under any circumstances, under any stressful conditions, would never make a male flower on it. We can still make male flowers on that plant by hormonally inducing that. And then the pollen that results from that can be used to pollinate another female, which also has been vetted to show that it has no hermaphroditic qualities. And then when those two uh, plants have uh, pollinated, they create seeds that will produce nothing but female, uh, female plants and no hermaphrodites and no males. And so there's a little snippet to understand how that whole thing is done. And a lot of times people get confused by the idea that like, well, isn't it technically a hermaphrodite if you made male flowers on that female? And the answer is no, if you hormonally induced it to create male flowers on a plant that would not normally make male flowers under any conditions, right? Because think about it logically, <clears throat> what's the fear of that plant creating male flowers under normal conditions in a grow room? Zero. There's no chance of it happening. However, uh, you can still make a plant like that make male flowers if you use a hormonal induction, which is how good feminized seeds are made. And that's how we do it at Brothers Grimm. So I'm glad we all got together and had this chat today, and I hope that was uh, enlightening and uh, illuminates uh, some of the questions that people have and uh, misconceptions and just a better understanding comes out of this. That's my hope. Anyway, thank you, and we'll see you soon.